spiritual, spiritually. Now you must make sure that your life way is flat from obstructions. The same obstructions that cause you to have weights and sins before. That they would be pushed out of the way. That the way be clear. No one would think that it's a good idea next week when we have that picnic on the back deck for me to leave ice chests and things around like that. This Bacher family is already crippled in all the best that they can do. Hey, listen, that's where some of you are, and yet you leave the same sins and weights in your life that caused you to be chastened in the first place. God says, respond, stop being discouraged, get up, and clean the path. Clean the path so that you have level footing. You're already lame. Clean things so your limping feet won't trip again. The response to chastening is this clearing your path from anything dishonoring the Lord. A clean and a clear path for you to recover because you're, you're limping. Further obstacles in your path could turn you out of the way. Look what it says in verse 13. And make straight paths for your feet, lest, God is saying do that, lest, this is a possibility, that which is lame, you're already lame, be turned out of the way. But let it, here's God's will, rather be healed. Further obstacles in your path could turn you out of the way. That can be understood, and you need to hear this. You got to hear it. Get, stay with me here. That can be understood as either knocking you off the path permanently or causing your limping feet to be turned out of joint. It actually goes from a sprain to a pulling the bone out of joint, turned out of the joint or out of the way. In either case, the it seems very clear that the end result of a believer who will not respond sits in sermons like this, knows their sins of omission and sins of commission in their life, but continues on. A believer, God has intervened in your life. He's brought things, but you will not respond. It's very obvious that those who will not respond, they will not repent and clear the way and rejoice again, are in jeopardy of having permanent damage to their Christian life. So what are you talking about? The Apostle Paul lamented in another passage that he kept his life under. Remember this passage? I keep my body under. He's talking about purity and these kind of things. I keep my life under subjection to the Lord, lest I should be a castaway. And that means not like a ship, a castaway, but of one who is disqualified from running the race because they're not running in the rules. He knew that there was potential that God would set him aside. This great man of God, God tells us in 1 Corinthians 11, in the passage we've been talking about, the Lord's Supper passage, sick and die passage, that he sometimes takes unrepentant Christians home to heaven prematurely. These verses seem to indicate that if we don't respond to chastening, the Lord either puts us on the shelf as far as spiritual service or influence or takes us home. And God does not want that. He does not want to do it. He would rather that you be, verse 13, yell it out, what? Healed. Healed. He would rather that you be healed than turned out of the way. He doesn't want to do it. He'd rather that you be healed. He would much rather that the chastened rep, uh, Christian repent and be healed and lifted up from their sorrowful ways and run the Christian race with patience and strength again. He doesn't want the discouraged Christian who has been chastened to remain low and sidelined. Are you sidelined, lame Christian, this morning? Somewhere along the way, maybe... 10 years ago, some very hard circumstances came along. Maybe you lost confidence in people. Maybe you lost confidence in ministers. Maybe you lost confidence in, in something in Christian life. Maybe it was just hard and uh, uh, punishment and not punishment, but discipline that the Lord brought to your life and you didn't understand it and you've been sidelined. God doesn't want you to be sidelined. He wants you to be healed and continue on. Are you going to be sidelined as far as Patient Christian running, victorious Christian running the rest of your life? Your Heavenly Father doesn't want that for you. You used to be a dynamic believer. You used to be a transparent believer. You used to allow the Lord to work in your heart when you read the Bible. And, and when you heard sermons, you were tender and to the touch of the, of the Holy Spirit. You used to be faithful to the Lord and, and using your life to count in priorities that matter, things that matter to Christ. But that's been long ago. Somewhere you got lame. Maybe God dealt with you. Now you're just hanging down. God says, be healed. 
Rise up. Rise up. That's God's will for you, lame Christian. You've been rebuked for continuing in sin. You're low, discouraged under trials. God says, lift up your spirits. I hurt for you. I want to profit you. I hurt you so you would profit. Move forward. Remove the obstacles and the weights and be healed spiritually. David, King David, was a man just like what I'm talking about. He was just like that. He was such a man. It began with neglecting his responsibility to oversee armies the way that kings do. And he stayed at home during one battle, and he went out on his balcony one night. Innocently, I am sure. He could have even went out there to be with God. On the top of another flat-roofed house, he saw a woman bathing. Instead of turning away and going inside the house and giving command that one of his officers go over and tell that woman to get off that roof, he was the king after all. He stayed and watched her and he lusted after her. And beyond that, he did something about it. He used his authority to commit adultery with that woman. She got pregnant. He tried to cover up his sin by bringing her husband home from the battle, thinking that it was so early in the pregnancy that her, her husband would lie with her and think it was his child, his baby. Being an incredible man of character and godliness and commitment to his country, he did not sleep with his wife, but rather slept all those days at the king's door, showing his faithfulness as a soldier of his country. David can continue in his slippery slope one step at a time by having that soldier placed in the front of the battle and that, that man died on the front. And then David continued on and took that pregnant wife as his own wife. And then God stepped in. And God chastened David sore. The first thing he did was sent a, a preacher named Nathan who stuck his bony finger in David's face and said thou art the man to rebuke him in a sin and he told him that his baby that baby will die I don't know why that is particularly something that hurt David's heart but it did God knew what to do in order to chasten his child to bring him back and it was a hard thing a, a child a baby died for seven days and nights, David was brought to the lowest discouragement. He would not eat. He would not talk to his servants. He laid and murmured and cried on his face before God to change his mind and not take that baby's life. Yet God, in his righteous chastening, took the baby. I would like to end this passage on chastening in Hebrews by going to what David wrote after those exact events that I just told you and for you to see some very practical points of repentance and restoration for your own life and turn with me to psalm 51 i can hear some of you already turning and this is how we'll end the sermon here are some very practical points that we will not stay on there are seven of them though i will not number them there are seven that i will bring forward no there'll be eight i added one early this morning okay there's probably many more here. Notice verse number 1 through 3, Psalm 51. All that I just told you happened. In fact, some of you can see it in your reference Bibles. It says, Have mercy upon me, David says, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according to, unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Please notice, first of all, that God is loving kind. He's loving kind on David, and he's loving kind on you. And his mercy is available for you, for his children. And he never turns away when his children, when his children respond correctly to chastening and rebuke. And he always wants to make things right. God's chastening on you shows his love for you, and he wants to forgive and restore just as he chastened his child David who was an adulterer and now a murderer notice verse number three that I read repentance means I acknowledge my sin as wicked and I don't ignore it look at verse three for I acknowledge my transgressions I acknowledge it look up here a moment it's one thing to say Lord forgive me all my sins in the day it's another thing to stare 
straight 